I am Ajay Shah. I'm the president of World Hindu Council of America or VHPA. And uh, Sudha, welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, we have a really, uh, uh, you know, interesting program today. Um, and we keep thinking that one of these days, the world will be enlightened enough that we can actually do shows about Hindu dharma instead of doing shows about uh, the hit job on Hindu dharma. Um, and today, as you, for people who are following the news, you might have seen that Al Jazeera actually came out with a news item. Um, and uh, this news item is basically a hit job on Hindu organizations in America, where they talk about the COVID related loans and the COVID and, and, and some of the grants that uh, some prominent Hindu organizations have got. And so the, I, I cannot imagine how poor a job has been done by the Al Jazeera reporter who I actually talked to. But before I go into the details of that, Utsada, I want to give you an opportunity to welcome our viewers. And then I will share my screen and you can actually summarize, uh, the, uh, summarize the news item that we are referring to. So with that, Utsada, over to you. Please uh, introduce, uh, please uh, welcome everyone and then when you're ready, I'll share my screen. Hey, everybody. And uh, uh, this week, again, uh, as Ajay Bhai rightly pointed out, uh, is a week of uh, one more attack on the Hindu organizations, Hindu communities in America, uh, this time from Al Jazeera. And uh, while many of you may be thinking that uh, this attack is uh, coming out of nowhere, uh, th what's the background behind it, uh, we will go <clears throat> into the reasons the excuses and the, and the agendas that are driving this kind of attacks. And uh, we will dissect uh, the reason why a media organization like Al Jazeera, which is probably one of the biggest media organizations in the world at this point of time, has its baggages. We will discuss those baggages, why this attack is coming. And, and it, we, we will try to dissect the part where we, we figure out how to respond to these kinds of uh, attacks because you know in the last couple of years it is now almost a, a weekly trend that every week there has to be a news item that would target the hindu communities in america and it is not happening out of thin air there is a well funded well supported uh, well thought out agenda behind it so with that uh, we will we will uh, i'll give you back to ajay bhai and we can put up the uh, slideshow and we can start with the uh, with the agenda uh, this week. Uh, sure. Uh, so let me let me share my screen. And Utsada, uh, why don't you walk us through? So here, uh, let me just show you uh, the first. Uh, let me just show you the actual news article uh, that came out of Al Jazeera, and then uh, we will show you our summary of this news article. So this is the news article, as you can see, from Al Jazeera. It was uh, written by Rakib. Hamid Naik, uh, I believe he is based in Delhi. Um, and the reason also that I wanted to bring this up in my in the preview mode of my, uh, of my machine is because I wanted to actually show you how it is contextualized with the kind of pictures that they have put, um, just to, you know, the kind of innuendos that they, um, they are trying to, uh, you know, make. So as you can see, uh, the title of the article um, is that, uh, you know, Basically, the Hindu organizations, uh, extremist Hindu organizations, getting uh, funding uh, from uh, you know uh, from uh, from U.S. government, and the title was Hindu right-wing groups in U.S. got eight hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars of federal COVID funds. Okay, Hindu right-wing groups in U.S. got eight hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars of federal COVID funds. Okay, so if you look at the article, if you go down, uh, the first is, uh, uh, you know, they start out very nicely with the uh, New York Hindus celebrating the, uh, you know, uh, celebrating groundbreaking of a Hindu mandir in Ram Janmumi in Ayodhya. And then they go down and they talk about the uh, COVID, uh, Coronavirus Aid Relief Economic Security Act um, and the EIDLA, which is the uh, Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance. Um, and the Paycheck Protection Program and Disaster Assistance Loan. Uh, then, then they go through the list of organizations. 
The first one is Vishwa Hindu Parishad of America or VHPA, which is our own organization. Uh, and they talk about VHPA received more than $150,000 under PPP uh, and further $21,430 under EIDL and DLA program. Now, something to clarify. Okay. $150,000 that VHPA received was a loan, not a grant, a loan, which has to be paid back with interest. Okay. And it is to be used for programs and for expenses as stipulated by the law, which can be audited by the government. And the government should audit all the organizations, not just VHPA. Uh, and we are, our books are open. The other $21,430 that he refers to, Raki refers to here, Al Jazeera refers to here, out of which $20,430 is not the cash payment that any organization would receive. That is the government's risk that is um, distributed over all the recipients of the loan and their share. So it is never the money that is granted, but government gives out, let's say, uh, $500 billion uh, as loans. And government says a certain percentage of loan is never going to be repaid. That risk they assign to each of the loan that has been made as a bookkeeping exercise. So in reality, $20,430 that Rakib Naik talks about is not the cash that VHPA received. It is an accounting exercise by the government. $1,000 was a grant. Okay, so we're talking here really, really about $1,000, just to put things in perspective. But it gave uh, Al Jazeera a nice opportunity for $1,000 to do a good hit job on World Hindu Council of America or VHPA and a, half a dozen other Hindu organizations. So it, it talks about, it repeats, it, it shows all the, uh, you know, uh, all the pictures from somewhere in India, who knows where, don't even know if it's from India. Um, and the, you know, these are the kinds of pictures that emerge out of, I, when I look at these pictures, uh, the image that is painted in my mind is the Delhi riots, which were engineered against the Hindus. Uh, you keep going down and it talks about the affiliation of VHPA and BJP. Now, we are a non-political organization. Uh, we have nothing to do with uh, political parties. We are a Hindu advocacy group, and our desire is for all the parties to support Hindutva, not just BJP, or not just Democratic Party, or not just Republican Party. Okay? Um, and it talks about our affiliation with RSS, and we have been very open. We have said that we derive, as with all the Hindu organizations, we derive inspiration from Hindu philosophy. And all the organizations that adhere to Hindu philosophies, uh, you know, work, uh, you know uh, we, we, we have respect for them. We get inspired by them. But operationally, we are all independent organizations. And so the, it, uh, you know, it talks about Ramjan Mumi. Now it's kind of interesting that the same kind of article was picked up by TRT World. And I will let you comment on this as well, Utsoda, because I thought that Turkey, um, you know, is one of those, uh, TRT is a public broadcaster of Turkey. And I'm kind of a little bit baffled that an organization that uh, with ties to Turkey uh, and uh, ties to, you know, uh, Qatar uh, would make a statement about reclaiming of religious places. As you know, Turkey, has recently gone through a major transformation. But so that I want to stop here. I think I took up a lot of time. I want you to actually um, uh, please uh, talk about uh, talk about uh, the entire issue from your perspective. And I'm going to now share the slides that you referred to uh, just a second ago. So, so that with that, I turn it over to you. Here are the slides, and uh, please, uh, and I'm going to uh, make zoom them so people can read it. But please go ahead. So th there are a couple of things that you very uh, lucidly pointed out in the presentation 
you just made about the article you you showed the entire article uh, especially the part where uh, world hindu council of america or vhpa which is our parent organization is targeted so i would not get into the uh, the economic aspect of things which you explained very nicely in reality you pretty much underlined the fact that barely a couple of thousand dollars are are 1000 1000 dollars is available 1, to vhpa uh instead of the you know hundreds of thousands that that are being projected and number two that you pointed out really well is that that entire amount is audited in fact vhpa is encouraging everybody to audit their accounts uh including some of the organizations that uh, al jazeera works with and so so i think it will be very good to see how they spend their money and and we will you know world in the council of america will be very happy to show that the money they received from the government the 1000 dollars they received is also audited so having said that I, i i will not talk about the economic aspects on of this issue but i will try to get into the socio political and the geo political aspect of this issue so all our audiences if they are following the issues concerning hindus in america as well as concerning hindus around the world they will see a pattern of targeting coming from al jazeera in the last 5 6 years uh, especially since india's prime minister narendra modi came to power and that targeting has been pretty much mirrored so it's almost like a tag team effort done by al jazeera and uh trt which is the turkish uh, broadcasting network both are very professionally run channels both have very well good quality presentation but both are also known for their very very strong connection with the muslim brotherhood and it is a trend now so you know since you brought up the issue of trt also rebroadcasting in this article i can assure you there will also be a pakistani tv channel and a pakistani media outlet that will also pick this up so you can see it's a, like a triad of jihadism that has been uh, recognized over the world in the past you know 5 6 years where these media outlets operate as the frontline media mouthpieces of jihadist uh, global jihadist organizations and you know if it is any solace to the hindu community in america the al jazeera and trt also target muslims who are not pro jihadists so <laughs> they are equal to opportunity haters even within their own muslim uh, communities because they are not islamist enough so you know obviously we hindus are at the really bad end of their business stick so having said that th- this article is not a surprise it was expected especially given the fact that a couple of months ago and ajay bhai i would request you to forward uh, to the next slide uh, see, i think the slide got uh, yeah you... i just stopped the uh, because i wanted to focus on you so let me yes. uh, let me share the screen again uh, and uh, go to the next slide now that you are referring to the slides so here is the next slide so the slide that they are uh, we we can keep going to the slide which shows the newsweek article uh, if if we have one Uh, yeah uh, so no, maybe, i'll bring up the newsweek article yeah so there is a there is a newsweek article, article. Uh, let me let me bring up up uh, while well, keep uh, yeah. keep going we uh, have a the... newsweek article that we wanted to discuss which yeah, is pretty much uh, yeah. a, a, an article that pointed out to the to the same kind of funding received by muslim organizations in america and it was also about covid funding and the interesting fact is that the hindu organizations who are being targeted in the al jazeera article you know including vhpa our organization the worst accusation they have is to blame them as quote unquote right wing because that's the you know you can blame anybody to be anything uh, you know in american context you you can if you blame somebody right wing you are immediately branched in and 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 clubbed together with white supremacist uh, christian organization uh, which ironically uh, target us to <laughs> so so we are at, at the receiving despite al jazeera calling us right wing we are at the at the hate end uh, at the receiving end of hatred from the right wing christian organizations that al jazeera claims hindutva groups are working with and this article that they have brought out is basically a response to an article by newsweek that was done a couple of i would say a couple of months ago when the covid funding originally started coming through 
to Muslim organizations that have actually been involved in terrorism in the Middle East. Organizations like CARE, Council for American Islamic Relations, organizations from like Indian American Muslim Council, which is an Indian affiliate of the CARE organization. And, and CARE has been, has been openly known to be supporting Hamas, which is a Palestinian terrorist organization banned by America, banned by most nations in Europe. Uh, so th that, so do you, you see the contrast. This, they are trying to come up with an article to draw false equivalence. So, so the, here is the article that you were talking about. Correct. Uh, and this article is by, by Sam Westrop, who is a very well-known scholar from Middle East Forum uh, and, and, has, and has been an expert on analyzing real terrorism that comes from radical Islamist group in, in, uh, in the Middle East as well as in America. So what you see here happening is that Al Jazeera is, is trying to draw a moral equivalence between the Islamic groups that have been blamed, which have direct links with terrorist groups, globally recognized terrorist groups, terrorist groups that have been known and listed by the United Nations, and trying to connect them to this Hindutva organization who they accuse, and many political parties around the world, you know, especially left-leaning parties, accuse of being right-wing. And again, ironically, these Hindutva groups are also the target of right-wing white supremacists. So, so it's a very, uh, you know, uh, underhanded effort to try to branch Hindutva organizations in the same breadth as radical Islamist organizations, which are global terrorist organizations. And what Al Jazeera is doing is basically taking the Newsweek article and say, hey, we, our Muslim organizations got targeted and got a bad name, I believe rightfully so, because they are actually supporters of terrorist organizations, organizations like CARE. And let's now somehow get back at the Hindus, even though the article came from somebody from the Middle East Forum, which is, you know, which Hindu groups are not connected to. Let's try to hit the Hindus because that way somehow we will tell the world that Hindus are bad and therefore we have done our job. So it's a, it's a hit job to draw moral equivalence uh, it's, it's almost the same thing that many times people do in the Middle East, where they would be like, okay, you know, Hamas is a bad Palestinian terrorist organization, but hey, you know what? The Israelis also are bad. You know, it, it, it's that kind of a moral equivalence that they are, they are, they are trying to draw. In, in this case, they, are, you know, they got hit by you know, organizations like Middle East Forum, which have done their research and done their uh, homework and targeted the Muslim organizations in America for supporting terrorists. But in return, Al Jazeera goes and targets us. So that, that's the main story. And I, I repeated and it a few times because you, I want if, you to also that If you look at this Newsweek article, right? And I, I will uh, quickly uh, uh, go over some of the stuff in the Newsweek article before we move back to the original Al Jazeera article. Um, as you can see, the kind of organization uh, that they have, uh, the Middle East Forum has targeted and uh, for a reporter to draw an equivalence between some of these organizations and um, is, you know the Hindu organizations which are devoted to seva, which are devoted to public service, uh, which are devoted to education and upliftment of the society, that is abhorrent. I mean, that is not just malicious, but it's abhorrent. I mean, I think, I don't know how anyone can keep a straight face and make this moral equivalence comparison. You look at this organization, uh, Khatme Nabuwat. Uh, Khatme Nabuwat is a violent movement that is targeted uh, Ahmadiyas, and uh, they have actually, you know, this is the movement about finality of Quran, and they have targeted Ahmadi citizens, uh, Ahmadis in Pakistan. Uh, the other organization they talk about here is an affiliate of uh, Simi. So, uh, well, they talk about several of them. They talk about the next one is uh, they talk about is Simi, which is Students Islamic Movement in America which share a common lineage with, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, you know, according to this article, um, it shared uh, uh, alleged ties uh, to the, uh, you know, uh, the Simi being the students Islamic movement in India. And uh, the organization that got funding here is Indian American Muslim Council. Now Indian American Muslim Council has not found a single news item which they have not used to, uh, brand Hindus as extremists, Hindus as terrorists, Hindus as uh, Islamophobic, whatever. Uh, this is just an organization that's full of hate. I, I have no hesitation in saying that this is an organization that says that basically 
you know, comes across as an organization that, um, uh, you know, does not like Hindus. At least that is my reading. So, of so I will tell you something interesting, Ajay no, Bhai, about... No, uh, you know, uh, so that I want to make sure that I cover this part. Uh, this article, the people who are in this article uh, pointed that out in the original version, and then they had to retract it. Uh, and you can see this, um, that, uh, you know, they, uh, somewhere here it says, a uh, description of Indian American Muslim Council as anti-Hindu has been removed, which is fine. I don't want to call them anti-Hindu. I don't want to call, you know, I, I, I'll I go with the fact that it appears to me that the positions they have taken are anti-Hindu. Uh, I don't know if in their heart, maybe they're pro-Hindu, but every single no, no, position I mean, they have it, taken... Ajay, but, leaving that, so what, I, let me clarify what Indian American Muslim Council did. Indian American Muslim Council, if you if you see, there was an article on 27th January in 2020, uh, I believe, yes. Uh, when these people actually, uh, they started a rally against India, against India's promulgation of Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir and the, and the humanitarian CAA, which India brought to give refugee status to the minorities of Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan. Uh, the, these Indian American Muslim Council was the prime organization that was behind the protest in front of the Indian Embassy in Washington DC on January 26. And in that protest, they were seen carrying posters in Urdu, which is a language spoken by a lot of the people in Pakistan. They, the Urdu language poster said, we took Pakistan while we, were, we laughed our way into taking Pakistan, we will fight our way to take India. So, which in, in, in Urdu it translates as Haske liya hai Pakistan, ladke lenge Hindustan, which is a slogan from the radical Islamists from early on in the 1960s. And, and this was basically saying that we, we got Pakistan literally without doing anything. We will take India and by fighting for it. And that's the Islamist narrative that Indian American Muslim Council actually brings in to their rallies at public places in Washington, D.C. So, so to compare that and say that World Hindu Council of America or Seva International, which is a relief organization, supporting and helping everybody, no religion, uh, no religious identity required. It, it's, it shows how Algeria's, Al Jazeera is desperately trying to malign Hindus because they have no excuse for the support that Muslim organization gave to radical Islamists around the world from America. So basically they're saying, we got exposed. Let us target the Hindus because we need to target them anyway. That's how. That's literally why this article from Al Jazeera comes out. Yeah, really. I mean, if you if someone has to just go through this article that Newsweek <coughs> Newsweek published, with Sada, and uh, you know they talk about all the uh, all the organizations that uh, that got money. Um, they they talk about the uh, Muslim American Society, uh, which the federal prosecutors have described as overt arm of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States. Uh, they talk about, and again, I mean, I, I don't have a way to independently verify it. I'm just reading the Newsweek article here. Um, they talk about the Islamic Circle of North America, which uh, a proxy for the violent South Asian Islamic movement, jamaat e islami uh, and a current congressional resolution warns about the group's extremist links. Um, so I and to draw the comparison, so I so that I'm going to stop this and I'm going to go back to the um, go back to the Newsweek uh, sorry the Al Jazeera article and uh, let you uh, let you comment a little bit more on this because now we want to you know now that we have set the context of what prompted Al Jazeera and uh, TRT World to bring out an article as a head job on Hindu organization that it was triggered by the Newsweek article we believe uh, which was uh, which uh, chronicled how the extremist violent organizations, um, yeah, Islamic organizations in America got the COVID fund. So they had to write something against the Hindus. And this is an article we believe is the result of that. So the, I, want to, um, I want to share with you uh, this art. I, I want to co complete what I was saying a little bit more about uh, the uh, a little bit more about how we responded, right? Uh, so uh, let me a couple of things. So let me uh, let me first uh, go to the article and just give you a little bit more on this of, of what they have said, right? So the essentially what they have said here is that a we are an affiliate of RSS, 
B, we are a branch or verb, uh, uh, ideological branch at least of VHP in Bharat. Uh, they say that we, uh, you know, and then they, uh, they said that, you know, BHP was responsible uh, for the campaign to build a mandir in Ram, at Ramjanmi site. And, uh, you know, and, and so we were basically responsible for destruction of a mosque. Of course, we have done a whole show on this. We have, we have proved that there never was a mosque. It was always the birthplace of Shiram. And the structure that was built uh, was a monument to, uh, to a, um, a destroyer who not only destroyed the uh, mandir, but it also, who also uh, killed hundreds of thousands of people uh, when he attacked India. Now, when the reporter reached out to me Sada, and asked me uh, about this, I, uh, I, I was asked three questions. And I was going to, I, I'm going to display the questions and the answers that I gave for our viewers to actually see the kind of exchange that I had with the reporter, because this is eye-opening as to what kind of reports what kind of uh, you know? What kind of a, a narrative gets built uh, by the news media based on the kind of questions they ask? Because I think you know, so the having dealt with press for years and years, I can tell you that a reporter like this always has a story that is predetermined, and what they uh, what they then do is write and uh, you know, uh, you know, insert your quote any which way they want. But basically, they already have everything written up and they already know what they're going to write and what kind of hit job they're going to do. So here is the, here is the email. There were three questions. I, within a few uh, you know, uh, hours of my getting his e uh, text message and email, this is what I said that, hey, I have the answers to first two questions. I'll get to the answers to the third question in, uh, by tomorrow. So the first question, does your organization support programs and projects run by VHP, uh, RSS and VHP affiliated NGO uh, in India? And the answer is, we are fully compliant with the FCRA Act in India, which is the Foreign Contribution Regulations Act. And we send money to several approved charity organizations and NGOs in India. As you would expect, we file IRS report uh, forms every year, and they are available for review on several general charity websites. Specific to your questions, we are very transparent about who we support. For example, one of our Rajas programs uh, support a child supports improvised children in India through the organizations listed on our website. It must, however, be noted that the donations collected in US from individuals in small donation are directed towards charity to these organizations. No money, no money. Okay, I emphasize again, no money from the care sect or any of the government fund uh, or funds is ever allocated to any activity outside of US. Is VHP America the counterpart of VHP India? Until a few years ago, VHP was mentioned as the US affiliate on VHP India website. How do you respond to that? So the answer is really simple. We are, we are an American 501c3 organization. We have never been part of any other organization within or outside of USA, nor do we have formal affiliate arrangement with any organization. Vishwendra Parishad was founded in India in 1964 by prominent leaders of Dharmic faiths. These founders included Swami Chinmayananda, Master Tara Singh, who was the one most prominent Sikh leader of the time, Munish Sushil Kumar, one of the most prominent Jain leaders of the time, um, uh, and, uh, and Guru Golwalkarji, uh, uh, Dalai Lama, who was representing the Buddhist faith. The Vishwendra Parishad was founded to bring about the unity of Hindus and the welfare of all based on the following Hindu Vedic principles, ekam sata vipra bahuda vadanti, the truth is one, sage call, sages perceive it in different forms, vasudaiva kutumbakam, entire universe is one family, and sarve sukhino bhavantu, may all be happy. And inspired by these universal principles across the world, independent organizations, okay, I re-emphasize, independent organizations, Within their, with their own constitution, with their own funding, programs, activities, started as a tribute to the saints and leaders who form Vishwendu Parishad and the above three principles outlined above, uh, outlined uh, that we adopted. So, so we all adopted the same principles. That is how Vishwendu Parishad was formed in 1971 in the US. Uh, in US, our goals are to educate the children about Hindu Dharma, provide support to Hindu families, 
bring Hindu, uh, Hindus and Hindu mandirs together, do seva activities within America and elsewhere, and provide a voice to the Hindus in the public arena and engage in interfaith activity. Okay, so that, those are the two questions. Then I went on and I answered the third question. And I said, uh, on the day, we, we received the SBA loan uh, under the act, and this is the same loan. And we will, and I, I said that our utilization of the loan is consistent with the terms and conditions uh, of the loan and the work uh, and the funds are being utilized for working capital of US. Okay. So the, how does this get translated to uh, Hindu extremist organization working to destroy the uh, other faiths and destroy the religious places in India and a militant organization? How does any of this, I mean, how, how do these connect? Can you please make a connection for me? I'll tell you the connection. The connection is that a bunch of people sitting in Qatar, uh, Istanbul, and America, and possibly Islamabad, have already written up the article before you even received the questions. And then the questions were given to you. And whatever was relevant from your answers, which could be one sentence, which could be two words, which could be one paragraph, were used to legitimize the article. And then it was published. But Ajay, I think it is important that our audience understands that you know we are talking about this so much today because you know World Hindu Council of America and Hindu American organizations have been targeted by Al Jazeera. If you follow Al Jazeera and TRT, yeah, let me put that over, up on the screen. Uh, please, uh, please explain what is Al Jazeera. Correct. So, Go if ahead. you follow Al Jazeera and TRT over the last four or five years, you will see that. They have been doing this on India, specific to India, on every issue, on CAA, on Jammu and Kashmir. They literally have every week a head job article. And not just on India, because, you know, I can understand that if it's a Muslim Brotherhood linked organization, they will target Hindus. They are known to hate Hindus. They are known to work towards, uh, you know, deplatforming and if wherever possible, physically attacking Hindus. That's what they do. That's what they have done historically. They even go after Muslim countries who are not Islamist enough. So Saudi Arabia had to literally ban Al Jazeera. Imagine this, Saudi Arabia has to ban somebody. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the Islamist who Saudi Arabia had to ban prior to this was Osama bin Laden who founded, went on to find, uh, you know, he founded Al Qaeda. So this is the level of radicalism that Al Jazeera and TRT are supporting at this point of time that Saudi Arabia had to shutter all local Al Jazeera offices within Saudi Arabia, and they had to be blocked in United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia. And Israel is, is actually on the verge of banning Al Jazeera as well. So countries within the Middle East, from Israel to United Arab Emirates, to Egypt, to Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, who, many of whom are Muslim majority, especially you know Saudi Arabia, they are all Islamic countries they are <laughs> unable to deal with the level of radicalism that Al Jazeera is projecting. So our audience can understand and see that we Hindus are literally at, at the complete hate end of their content. And they have been doing that over the last four or five years on Kashmir and, and CA and any issues concerning India. It's just that this time around, they have targeted the major Hindu organizations in America and we have to talk about it in our show. But I would request you, Ajay Bhai, to go on to the slide that uh, talks about, you know, yeah. New, New York Times article on. There we on, go. Here it is. Here it is. So, you know, for those of our our audiences and those who stumble upon our website and listen to us, who are of the opinion that okay, VHP America and Hindu organizations are quote unquote right wing, whatever that means to them. Here is an article from New York Times. Okay, it's the Bible of the left wing in America. Okay, so if you do not trust us. Go and revisit this New York Times article from 2016. In that article, and I have drawn an arrow to, to, to highlight the part, Al Jazeera has been known and presented as a media affiliate of Al Qaeda. You know, for those of you who need to help, need some help to know what Al Qaeda is, if you were too young when September 11 happened, uh, 
it's a media it's con, it's being presented as a media affiliate of al qaeda in a new york times article so if anybody thinks that you know quote unquote we are right wing and which we are not but you know you can blame the dog and hang it go to the bible of the left and read new york times from you know february 20 uh, 17 2016 and there you will find al jazeera being actually connected to al qaeda so if you hindus out there are worried about why al jazeera has been attacking vhp america or seva international you can rest in you can rest a little in the in the fact that it is almost a media front of the al qaeda and that is the level of radicalism this media outlet presents and has been banned in muslim countries around the world including saudi arabia so and, and of course america too america at one point had al jazeera being broadcast through its cable news networks cable channels but they had to take it off because of the direct association of al qaeda uh, of al jazeera with qatar government and the way the qatar government was promoting radical islamists so it is it is a qatar government funded initiative to promote islamism around the world so the uh, let's go back to the uh, and on the that uh, then uh, goes on and talks about hindu organizations and these are uh, the organizations that uh, you know we are uh you know we are very proud of um, ekal vidyalaya for example so the this is an organization that is changing literally really changing the lives of millions of kids this is the organization that is running 100000 schools in areas where it would take someone two days to walk to reach a remote area a remote village and the dedicated volunteers and dedicated teachers who actually walk a day walk two days to go there to teach and come back these are the kinds of places these are the kinds of uh, you know programs for sarvodaya uh, in uh, the uh, upliftment of everyone gramothan upliftment of whole village these are the kinds of programs that organizations like ekal vidyalaya are doing they have ekal health they are providing help health uh, they are providing health services to these remote areas they have ekal uh, you know uh, uh, training where they are providing uh, you know uh, training uh, employment training to people this is the kind of organization that is worth emulating around the world so that and they have done and they have pointed out that this is also uh, a uh, this is again uh one of those organizations that uh, you know that has gotten funding a little bit of funding i mean they're talking about like uh uh you know direct payment of $7000 and a loan of $64000 i i don't know what the actual uh, you know uh, fundraising for equally there is it's in millions a year uh because these uh, a lot of generous people donating from all over the world because when you look at when you look at the kind of places remote places where it is making an impact everyone would want to contribute not just not just money you want to contribute your time you want to contribute your uh, you want to contribute uh, your services you want to contribute uh, money you want to contribute everything for that kind of organization they are also uh, targeting uh, so that they have also targeted seva international now seva international uh, we we have designated seva international as a charity of the week many many times so that i want to show you how they have done uh, how cleverly they have put seva international in the article and i i sincerely hope that seva international responds because this is the kind of uh, you know uh, this is the kind of uh, uh you know uh i am am i sharing the right screen just a second so that what do you see on the screen do you see the newsweek article oh sorry the al jazeera article uh so that i see your new article you took took it off uh, oh i'm sorry to show, show I, share I the the al jazeera article. article yeah i i'm sorry yeah uh, al jazeera article look at the seva international okay now we have done seva international we have commended seva international for 
awesome work that Seva International has done. I mean, they they have soup kitchens, and in America they give out uh, you know uh, in all over America they do COVID relief. They uh, the COVID relief covers hundreds of thousands of volunteer hours and dollars and uh, you know masks that they distributed. I mean, this is a flagship seva organization in America for Hindus. And look at what they have done to it. They put Seva International and they talk about a mosque set on fire in Delhi. So the Delhi was a riot. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, there were Hindus who were brutally murdered in Delhi. Uh, there were, you know, uh, there were firebombs. The people were sitting on the rooftop and throwing at Hindus. One of the mosques in that fire probably got burned, who knows? And all of a sudden, they they put Seva International and they put a mosque on fire in Delhi. So the, what are the, I, is this, if this is not a definition of maliciousness, what is it? So this is, this is, see, the problem is that many times organizations like Seva International, which genuinely do a lot of good work with, which, I mean, they have been doing amazing work in America. I mean, forget about uh, disaster relief in the Indian subcontinent, whether it is, you know, in India, in other parts, in Nepal and other countries in the subcontinent. They do so much work in America, you know, in, in, in disaster relief, especially when, COVID hit and before that, when we had hurricanes, they have been doing stellar work and they've been recognized for that. The, the thing that, that Al Jazeera and, and, the, and their Muslim Brotherhood friends who put together this article, the, the thing they're targeting against Seva is basically to put associate them with violence against Muslims. That, and that violence is basically, could be anywhere else in the world, but they are basically trying to visually associate Seva International with that violence. And in doing so, they are trying to uh, destroy the reputation of this organization, which is working selflessly. And I believe that they can do this partly because many of the Hindu organizations in America, uh, I think World Hindu Council of America, SEVA and all the, they work with so little overhead. They don't have full-time employees. We have very few full-time employees and most of the work is focused on, you know, actual relief work, actual SEVA work with extremely little overhead costs. And when they do that, they do not have a public relations team. They do not have a, a, a research team. They do not have a media team. And when you don't do that, the and you get attacked by organizations like Al Jazeera and Al Jazeera and all these Islamist groups, many a time the Hindu organizations are not even equipped to take a fight up against these you know globalist Islamist groups. And because they are so well funded and well resourced, the organizations like Al Jazeera and and, and their Muslim Brotherhood friends. Hindus are always hesitant. Okay, let's just keep doing our good work. Let's just focus on the communities we serve because once we once we help the real people, nobody will be affected by this propaganda. And that's why you know these these Islamist groups, these uh, these outlets like Al Jazeera have the audacity to put, put this kind of besmirching, this kind of anti-Hindu, uh, you know, association on such good organizations, Seva International. I think you know. This is for our audience to see and, and they can make their own judgment that like, should Hindu organizations be actually so quiet and, and take it so, so you know, lying down like this because you know, these Islamist groups don't care. They know Hindus will not respond. They, are, they have never responded. Hindus are always focused on getting the work done. And, and I think that this is the outcome of that. Yeah. So the, um, I, I want to, uh, they, they talk about, uh, then they talk about in the same article, if you go down, uh, and uh, uh, if, they, if we go down, they talk about American Hindu Foundation, HAF. And look, I mean, <laughs> they talk about HAF. Uh, so they talk about VHP and they, you know, the image they show is uh, Modi worshipping or uh, the, the riots, right? They show the image of riots. Implications that VHP does riots. They show... Uh, uh, they show Seva International and they show burning mosque. Implication being the Seva International burnt a mosque. Uh, they go down, uh, you go down and, um, uh, uh, you know, you go down and you look at HAF and they show, uh, you know, someone holding up Jai Shri Ram. And they, the interesting part, part I found is that the negative part is a policy difference. They say, oh, they're, they're, uh, uh, they're Women Defense of Citizenship Amendment Act. 
So there are people who are fleeing the persecution um, in Bangladesh, persecution uh, in Pakistan, persecution in Afghanistan. Sikhs are being killed in a Gurudwara attack in Afghanistan and they have nowhere to go. They are fleeing Afghanistan. They want to have refuge in India. Pakistan, every day, um, there's, there's so much atrocities against Hindus. They want to leave Pakistan. They want to come to India. And India is providing them a sanctuary. India is providing them expedited immigration so that the, and, exp, uh, and expedited asylum so that they have a place where they don't have to fear for their life every single day. They don't have to worry about their daughters getting abducted and converted every single day. Not very Forcibly. different from what President Biden has supported for the and same community. something that President Biden has supported. Yes. And, for, uh, and to put that and put a picture of someone, it is, if, if they put a picture uh, of celebration as a negative uh, thing, how much more Hindu, Hindu phobic or Hindu hating can you get? Uh, this, uh, if someone were to put a banner uh, praising, uh, you know, Islam, and if someone were to write a hit job article on them, uh, would it not mean that they're being Islamophobic? I would think that Al Jazeera here is being Hindu phobic by, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, by putting up these kinds of pictures and implying uh, that, uh, you know, implying that somehow this constitutes, uh, this picture, this particular picture constitutes Hindu extremism. Okay, so the, and then I, I want to now get into the analysis because here they quote five different organizations, okay, and four, uh, four or five different organizations who they went and interviewed, who reinforced what they wanted to say. Okay, here, is, here are the organizations and I'm going to share the screen so that our viewers can get an insight into what kind of organizations they interviewed to make the point they wanted to uh, make the point they wanted to make. Usada, take it away. Talk about these five. Um, let's talk about South Asian Citizen Web. Who are these people and what are their, what is their purpose in life? We didn't put it here because it was too much to write. So please tell us about South Asian citizen web. So, so the, now this is the most interesting part of this presentation that we are having today, this conversation we are having today. The reason I say that is because these, the Al Jazeera Muslim Brotherhood network that put together this anti-Hindu article actually did their homework to bring together what they can project as intersectional allies. And how did they do that? And this is the most interesting part because there is a lesson for the Hindu community in America, especially for those uh, who are part of the organizations that got hit by this uh, narrative. So they brought together a coalition of allies, intersectional allies that would justify and that would, you know, in a backhanded manner legitimize the accusations they are, that Al Jazeera is making against the Hindu groups. And it's very smartly done because what they did was they went and approached Hindu organizations that are known to be anti-Hindutva. And when I say anti-Hindutva, these are organizations that have a record of working with Khalistani separatists, with Kashmiri separatists, with anti-India Islamist groups. Uh, Hindus for Human Rights is one of them. They have, they, you know, it's, again, the name is so, so ironic that the you know, Hindus for Human Rights is an organization, pretty much, you know, two people, three people organization that has been propped up and shows up in every place where you will see Khalistani separatists, where you will see Islamists who are wanting to break Kashmir away from India, you know, every place where there is a hearing at the Capitol Hill, where there is a, where the, there has to be a Hindu face put, put in front to legitimize the Islamists you will find this uh, Hindu for human rights being presented there. And, and if you look into the membership and people who write for this article, they're, ex they're ultra leftists, which is, you know, pro Maoist, uh, violent leftism that has grown in many parts of the world, including in India, very violent movement that has caused deaths of thousands of people every year. They come from that ideological persuasion. And, and same with South Asian Citizenship Web. It's a coalition of extreme left organizations that within the Indian subcontinent promotes and allies with narratives that deal with the breaking up of India. They ally themselves with that. Uh, if you go back to the slide again, Ajay, that I oh, was- Oh, sorry. Finish. I thought you, uh, you'd moved on to the next one. No, sorry. No. So I want to talk about 
and and arjun rajagopal another person he he's one of the extreme left you know media and uh, uh, academia person who again these sunita vishwanathan arvind arvind rajagopal south asian citizenship web this is a coalition of hindu sounding names of individuals who have always allied with separatists who are fighting against india and anti hindu islamists who are operating against hindus in america so they are the token hindu sounding named faces representing those organizations uh the other two that we have here the study of hate and extremism and free so, radical uh, can i move on to the next slide i think that's where you're talking about that right yeah so i want to uh, i want to just say that oh okay yeah, sorry yeah so so study for hate and extremism and free radicals project this two are very very interesting because the the way they got these two organization is by creating intersectionality within the american political uh, circles both these groups are working against white supremacist groups in america so what what these al jazeera people have done is they have smartly approached these people who are fighting against white supremacism and associated hindus and hindutva as people who identify with white supremacists what christian pcionini and brian levin you know study of hate and extremism and free radical project should study people who have given legitimacy to the al jazeera article they should study the aggressive and the violent actions that hindus have faced in america from white supremacists and how hindus are actually at the receiving end they should be supporting hindu organizations but the fact that hindu organizations again it's a failure on our part that we have not been able to reach out and build partnerships and coalitions even explaining our honest positions to our own communities in america that is the reason why you have organizations like free radicals project and study of hate and extremism somehow getting sucked into providing legitimacy to an al, al jazeera article against the hindu community in america so that's the background so now we can go to the next slide ajay bhai yeah let's uh, let's talk about the uh, center for study of hate and extremism So if What you see this, this this is an organization that has has a deep penetration within the California state uh, academia and 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 it has you know it has support from the California state uni university structure and if you notice the names here it's actually a coalition of multiple multi faith multi ideological groups but you will still see that there is a strong muslim presence in these groups and i'm showing this to sh show our community how intersectionality and partnerships are built by many of these islamic groups they actually build platforms and share small little ideological overlaps with other organizations other ideological groups other religious groups and then use that overlap to create a larger agenda which may actually when many of these guys probably don't even know about hindutva organizations but they are somehow sucked into this narrative building and i think that's where I, this is more to show our people why despite being right in their in their presentation in in their actions in their work and being benevolent to the humanity in their work they are still going to be blamed for something that they are not that's because they are not able to reach out and build partnerships and create the right messaging in the society they work in again free radical project this this individual is actually a, a anti white supremacist and as hindus we have been at the receiving end of white supremacism hindus have been killed in america because they are not whites and hindu organizations are always at the receiving end of christian fundamentalist right wing organizations all the time in fact some of these christian fundamentalist organization also work with care to target hindus so irony here is that care is able to build a, a, a consensus where they are getting right wing christian organizations and left wing anti white supremacist organization to join hands and target hindus when these two groups actually don't see eye to eye with each other and rightfully so are fighting against each other so yeah this is the irony of the whole situation and, and that's what is a lesson for our community that if you stay silent and don't do anything and don't respond to these kinds of targeted attacks using media and social media you will end up in a position where there is no allies for you despite you doing the right thing all the time uh, so that is so well put because this has been my contention for years and years that hindus have not succeeded in building allies even though hindus share core values with a lot of organizations that are out there um that includes a lot of organizations that are on the right a lot of organizations in the center a lot of organizations on the left 
we have not been able to, and I, I, I include us, I mean, we are Hindu advocates and act activists. We have not built the kind of coalitions, we have not built the kind of partnerships that we should be building because uh, the, uh, the people who don't like Hindus and people who don't like Hindu dharma have uh, found this very little intersectionality and have been building partnerships everywhere. And at some point, I think Hindu organizations have to realize that um, you know, just uh, you know, doing good work and dedicating your life to the Hindu society while you're getting overrun by this hate is not going to help. Uh, the second generation and the third generation Hindus are going to get the brunt of it and they will see that the, the amplification of negativity will take over. Not just that. I mean, individuals like the people who run Free Radical Project should be actually on our side based on what yeah. the reality is. Yeah. The fact that Muslim Brotherhood groups and Al Jazeera could bring them onto their side, however little that, that side is. I mean, you know, they probably just got a sentence out of them out of context and just used that sentence against us. But the fact that Hindu organizations have not been able to actually form allyship with these groups, at least have them know who we are and how we are actually at the receiving end of the hate from right-wing Christian white supremacist groups shows how much of a failure this has been for the Hindu community itself and the Hindutva groups. And I, I have to underline this part because sometimes we are smug in our, you know, many Hindu Hindutva organizations are smug in their, you know, comfort zones of, you know, let's not worry about this. You know, this will all, this is all propaganda. This will all go over. Hey, after all, Al Jazeera is banned in the US. Why can't look at it? This is why you have to look at it because this organizations and organizations like this are actually our allies. They should know why, what we face in America. And yet they are on the other side. They are on the side of Muslim Brotherhood for lack of better. Yeah, and, 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 and so are the Hindus. I mean, and, and these are the Hindus who would, you know, who, uh, whose ancestors have faced the most brutal of occupation, conversion, and, uh, you know, massacres and enslavement. And these Hindus are now taking the side of people side of people who actually propagated uh, these atrocities on them without even knowing. I mean, I think how comfortable have we gotten in two generations of freedom that we don't even know what has come and hit us. We don't even talk about it. That's we the don't even talk part. about it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah, yeah. We don't like, even talk in, about in, it. In all the discussion over the last year about you know slavery, about colonialism, that is, you know, the American socio-political conversation is ripe with this conversation of colonialism. And you talk to a young Hindu and they will not know anything about how the thousand years of their own history is about colonization, slavery and forced conversion. I mean, you talk to a Hindu, I was, you know, two months, two weeks ago, we were discussing the genocide of 3 million Hindus in Bangladesh. And you talked, I hear Hindus all the time, young Hindus who will like, oh, I never heard about this. I mean, imagine, a young Jewish person not knowing what Holocaust is. Imagine yeah, we, we, a young uh, Armenian not knowing what the Armenian genocide is that happened a hundred years ago. And here and so we the, have Hindus we don't who don't yeah, even want to discuss absolutely. this. So it is this is the tragedy of our times, and I think we are to be blamed for it as Hindu organizations, as Hindu leaders. I think we own responsibility for not having been able to convey for whatever misconceptions we have in our heads about you know doing seva quietly, not having a voice, you know being quiet, whatever we. We tell ourselves to justify it to us. I think it's a failure on our part. Also, that I, you know, we 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 asked this question a few weeks ago, saying that hey, when does a Jewish kid know that Holocaust occurred? And you, we said five years. At the age of five, they probably know a little bit about Holocaust, even though they don't understand the nuances. And then we talked about, uh, you know, when does a Hindu kid know this? And we said never. And Vanna Sharmaji is online, and she's saying. Yes, we are smug. We are the crossroads where we must align. Who can be our, on our side? And then she said, we must do Ithyasa documentary and apply in Hindu Sunday schools. I agree with all of that. Bipinder Jindalji also on the line. And uh, he said, like, Satya Meva Jayate, truth shall win while we continue our efforts to expose the lies. Absolutely. And uh, let's expose some more. Um, the next organization that uh, participated in the hit job was Hindus for Human Rights. And we have talked a lot about Hindus for Human Rights, but we continue, we will continue to talk about it. This is the most 
mis, uh, the biggest misnomer uh, of all. The Hindus for human rights is for human rights for everyone other than Hindus, it seems. The founder of this organization, Sunita Vishwanathan, is also the founder of Sadhna, which is a student group, uh, so-called progressive. Um, this is, and I'll, I'll go over that a little bit. Um, and, and she's also the co-founder of Hindus for Human Rights and Coalition Against Fascism in India, Kafi. This is the organization uh, that participated in uh, weaponizing Holi. Now this year they've changed the tune. But uh, so if you go to their website, this year they're praising how great Holi is. Last year, they donated $100 to Holi Against Hindutva, which is weaponizing Holi Against Hindus. They don't do Eid against uh, you know, uh, Islamic terrorism. They didn't do that. But they were against Holi. They, were, they donated money to Hindu against, Hindu, uh, Holi Against Hindutva. Sunita Vishwanathan is also on the, uh, the person who said that Sita Sings the Blues uh, is a wonderful way to keep Hindu mythology alive. This is the most, one of the most Hindu phobic cartoons that came out, which denigrates Ramayana and uh, Sita Mata. And she said there's a wonderful way to keep the Hindu mythology alive. In September of 2019, uh, Sunita Vishwanathan wrote about Hindus for Human Rights participation in, uh, uh, you know, uh, she wrote about her organization, Hindus for Human Rights, participating in Stand with Kashmir. And Stand with Kashmir, Utsada, is supported by extremist organizations and Gulam Nabi Fay, who was imprisoned for being a spy of ISI in America. Okay, this is Hindus for Human Rights. Look well, at the kind well, of press releases. So, so let me tell you something more about Stand with Kashmir. So Stand with Kashmir's page was taken down by Twitter. Uh, because of the hate. Imagine this, a Twitter is, is known for being sympathetic towards left, left of center uh, organizations. And it has, it has given a huge, huge rope, long rope to organizations who, who have targeted India in the past. Even Twitter had to take down the page of Stand with Kashmir because of its direct association, direct association with Muslim Brotherhood linked organizations and direct support for Hezbul Mujahideen, which is a banned terrorist organization in America. And Sunita Vishwanathan stands with stands with, stand with Kashmir. Yeah. So you can see the association and, and she of never talks Sunita about the And she never talks about the Kashmiri Pandits who have been- for, uh, Forget that, I mean, there are, there are a lot of people. Let's not even bring Kashmiri Hindus into this. The point we need to underline is that Sunita Vishwanathan, who runs this totally misnomered organization called Hindus for Human Rights, is actually standing with Stand with Kashmir, which is a front organization of Hezbul Mujahideen, a terrorist organization that has been declared a terrorist organization by the United States of America. Forget about India. Even in America, it is declared as a terrorist organization. And she stands with that organization's front group called Stand with Kashmir, which was taken down by Twitter also. So, yeah. so this is the background of an individual and she gets the platform everywhere. That shows the level of anti-Hindu bias. In, no, yeah, 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 absolutely, the... absolutely. And then, you know, this is the organization that ganged up along with 139 other organizations in uh, the state of Washington to attack in a small city council, in Redmond City Council, to attack um, a APPWW, a small Hindu organization. We talked about that. It was so not even a Hindu organization. organization. It was not even a Hindu organization. It, it was, was not even a Hindu organization. Yeah. yeah. The, you're the right. fact it's, that it's, there were Hindus in it. That there were Hindus spoke. in the organization. Yeah. They were not a Hindu organization. Right. Correct. The fact that there were yeah. Hindus in APPW which spoke about supporting the religious minorities in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan who face forced conversion. Yeah. Just that little fact in which the people who they were supporting were also Muslims. But such is the association of Hindus for Human Rights and Sunita Vishwanathan that they had to jump in to oppose APPW because Muslim Brotherhood was getting targeted by APPW. So if you boil down the associations here, okay, Hindus for Human Rights and Sunita Vishwanathan stands with which groups? Muslim Brotherhood, Hezbul Mujahideen. These are the two groups whose voice they have been protecting and promoting all these years. Yeah. So and it's so for people to decide who uh, these are. These are just... Are. So the, in, in, you know, the, the, uh, they're just useful idiots, but they're, if they were just useful idiots, it would be okay. But they are the idiots with an agenda to, to destroy Hindu dharma. Look at the kind of, look at the kind of uh, causes they have supported. 
they were uh, they uh, you know they supported the uh, city council anti ca resolution uh, they supported the mass murderer of hindus who has who killed hundreds of thousands of hindus uh, audrey tusky audrey tusky um, is you know uh, in i would call her the hindu holocaust denier i i don't think anyone has ever used that phrase for her but she is really the aurangzeb's hindu holocaust denier and uh, hindus for human rights uh it joins the cause with audrey tusky they are the ones who take out a, a, a advertisement a full page advertisement they support the full page advertisement where the radicals go and hoist a non indian flag on the red fort in delhi on india's republic day they are the people who divide the hindu society uh, support the division of hindu society when it comes to cisco caste based lawsuit so these are the people who have found every and i can go on and on right we did a we did this uh, you know we we showed this even in a previous episode and this is a continuation from there so but, they have but, never found a anti hindu cause that they have not liked but ajay bhai in in to, to draw a silver lining in this cloud here i must say that after you spoke after we spoke about and exposed hindu for human rights and 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 sunita vishwanathan's work last year i think it was 7 or 8 months ago they changed tactics on holi they now are they are yeah, now no, promoting yeah they, they are supporting holi oh, yeah that's what hey, we started with yeah ajay bhai after this maybe they will support vhp a one day well, I, i'm knows? hoping i'm hoping I, i mean I, i you know we welcome them with open arms i mean they i think they should uh, they should i, I won't welcome them with open arms i i would welcome them for a dialogue i would welcome them for a dialogue where we can have a honest conversation absolutely yeah i, I, I ajay bhai this whole thing of oh, welcoming everybody with open arm is 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 again <laughs> something you guys have see, to see i i uh, we I, should I, have I, a conversation with these organizations and actually discuss facts because so the uh, yeah. so, so the uh, somebody said that they cannot read the material on the screen uh, vanna ji is saying uh, um i don't know why because uh, it shows up here as a very large font so i'm not sure uh so that i uh, as i said that uh, you know uh, uh we when i when i say that we welcome uh, them we welcome in ghar wapsi uh and so we welcome hindus for human rights on ghar wapsi so that i want to show this uh, one particular slide and because they brought up um uh, and uh, vanna ji is saying it's too small i'm not sure uh why uh, so that you can probably read this or not if you can tell me i can read it but i can see that if somebody has a smaller computer screen or if somebody is is watching us over the phone uh i think it's uh, hard to hard to see i i with my screen uh, which is a pretty big screen uh, i can barely see it so i okay. i can see i can understand why somebody uh, who is uh, using a portable set uh, is right. going to find okay. it harder so vanna ji point taken vanna ji this is the one slide that i want to kind of show um and uh, uh i want to bring this up so that because they actually picked on infinity foundation an academic kind of research center uh, place right a think tank research center and they said that they got some funding and they then they made a statement that infinity foundation is funding radical hindu thinking um in various uh, in various uh, you know institutions academic institutions the reason i show this slide is to make the point that hindus uh, you know at one point dharma civilization foundation contributed uh, you know uh, some money to create chairs and a whole universe almost descended on them and they had to actually take the they were actually they were forced to uh, the university of california at irvine was forced to return the money to the dharma civilization foundation for an endowed chair this is the kind of vitriol and a hatred towards hindu organizations funding hindu academic uh, chairs in uh, various universities it brought it to a halt at university of california irvine now i want to compare and contrast that with the country funding the country funding of islamic education in america over the last 15 years qatar where al jazeera is uh, based and owned by qatari government utsada um uh, has funded 809 gifts or contracts worth how much almost 4 billion dollars 
3.8 billion dollars Qatar itself has given 3.8 billion dollars to to foreign countries exactly uh, to promote okay, islam so saudi arabia 1 and a half billion uae 874 million kuwait 353 million egypt 89 million oman 60 million bahrain 54 million and what were they opposing 300000 dollars of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, probably a million dollars let's say a million dollars to ucr wine okay from, from and, americans from not from not, americans not yeah. even from foreign governments yeah and this, this is the level of uh, you know if this this document we should we should put out there to for people to see yeah, I, I, people I, like sunita vishwanathan see in, in fact if sunita vishwanathan is getting any donations from any of these people she should uh, increase her rate at least she should get rich I, I think Are so because Hindu. I, you know, I. You know, we would rather have a rich anti-Hindu Hindu than have a poor anti-Hindu Hindu. <laughs> no, it's really so. That, I mean, look at this. I mean, and Infinity Foundation got you know a few dollars here and there from as a as a loan and a grant, and they are coming down on Infinity Foundation. Look at this. Look at the kind of funding from foreign sources. And we should do a whole show on this actually. So last night I was looking at this and I found this source because I said, like, "Why? I mean, you know, Dharma Civilization Foundation uh, was so viciously attacked, but nobody talks about uh, nobody talks about this funding." And um, so that I I want to uh, any final thoughts before we move on to the other news of the uh, other news. Well, my final thoughts are that you know what saddens me most is that when Hindus are used as as the front, you know, as the front lines against other Hindus, especially our our organizations, because you know, it it, it saddens us because we anyway don't have the infrastructure and the resources to fight against this kind of attacks on us. And when our own community members are are becoming useful idiots, it's it's a cause for concern, and that's something that our community should address. that's something that our organizations should address there should be dialogue there needs to be exchange of facts uh, i do not expect any concessions and any understanding from islamists any i do not expect any understanding from al jazeera which you know which is out there supporting al qaeda in many cases but those from the larger community with whom these organizations have built intersectionality you know anti white supremacist groups uh, left of center groups i have nothing against left of center groups hindu groups who are working on behalf of left of center groups if they are getting misguided and 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 being you know literally being uh, used as useful idiots idiots by these islamists that is something that we should work on that is something that we should really strive to reduce we cannot get rid of it because there will be always selfish interests out there with a the fish to fry but from our side it it is going to be helpful if we do this and so therefore that is going to be my closing point on this conversation that yeah. you know, we so really that, need to do better job with outreach quickly move on to the next topic and uh, that one is the good news of the week and so that i you know we we can always all of us can uh, use good news and i i think that uh, in a, in a week like this when uh, hindus have been attacked relentlessly uh, one more time um we can all use good news right so here we go good news of the week so, so ajay bhai you are showing the hindu seva act of the week not the good uh, no 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 i I'll, i'll move i'll move i it just moved to the uh, you know here's the good news of the week utsoda uh president biden has let the h1 visa ban expired and you know that hundreds of thousands of hindus will benefit out of this and right. credit where it's due uh regard uh, we are non political and we see that uh the primary uh, you know beneficiary of this uh are going to be hindus who have been waiting um uh, you know waiting to get their employment get their visas and this visa ban has been uh, has now uh, exp- uh, you know it, it, that law has uh, um is set to expire so they will be able to uh you know they would be able to resume their career in some ways so utsada even though this is not directly applicable to hindus hindus are going to be major beneficiaries of this and i would count this as the good news of the week utsada i, I think, did have yeah. 
Yeah, Go I ahead. would agree with you, and I think uh, you know the credit is needs to be given to the Biden administration for taking this step. Uh, this this was overdue, and I think they did the right thing, and uh, I, I think that that's it helps the Hindu communities immensely in America when this is done. So the Hindu Seva and Charity Act of the week. This week we nominate Hindu Pact, our own organization, because if you want to see a more of this kind of advocacy work done at a professional level, we can really use the resources that would come out of your donations. So please donate generously to Hindu Pact. Not just advocacy website, work, but also the research. Button. Not uh, just advocacy work, also the research that goes behind research. that advocacy. You know, just plain advocacy is noise. There is an immense amount of research that goes into it, and there is more research that needs to be done. But none of this is possible if there is no food on the table, to put it plainly. So uh, I think it is important that organizations like Hindu Pact are promoted, supported, and funded. Because as you can see, our other side deals in billions of dollars, literally. Absolutely. We need, we need support. Uh, million, to billions, billions, not millions, billions. Billions, correct. So we need so support the, um, to do this work. I, I, you know, just when the music started, I realized that you were trying to say something. Do you want to finish your thought? You're on mute. Uh, so that no, I was saying to... that regarding the you know, Hindu uh, in good news of the week about the H1 visa, the fact that we discussed the good thing about the H-1 visa ban being removed by the Biden administration might invite an attack on H-1 visa from the Islamist organizations now, because we mentioned that it is good for the Hindus. <laughs> so I think, I think what you will see next is that suddenly there'll be a bunch of Islamist organization and, and they're, they're, you know, they're puppets in, in Sunita Vishwanathans of the world who will say, oh, H-1 visa is bad <laughs> because these Hindu groups have said it is good for Hindus. <laughs> Hey, so that the final segment, uh, the one that everyone uh, everyone waits uh, waits for all the time, and uh, this uh, you know we we have to uh, this has to come with a huge huge drum roll. So here we go. Um, the uh, the Hindu phobe of the week. Don't give a drum roll, Ajay. Uh, it's yeah, that's a better song. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but if you go to the next slide, you, you always always have to keep a smile on your face so that it doesn't I, matter I, I how always, it is. I you know. Look, so we, we have a professor the... at Yale University, and uh, you know he, he. Yeah, what's up with this person? What what? Uh, this is the person. So that he is blaming the killing of Hindus, the destruction of Hindu mandirs. On Hindus, what's okay. wrong with him? No, so he, he's blaming. It's it's it's. There is an English phrase which called, uh, uh, you know, you blame you blame the victim, and and then you hang him. So you know, so there here it is. You know, this is no better example of that. And this is the level of Islamist prejudice. I think it's it's very appropriate that we discuss this because. Individuals like Ahmad Mushfiq Mubarak and, and many intellectuals from Bangladesh and other parts of other Islamic countries in the world have found their way into American, American academia and are becoming faces and ideological representatives of Islamism with connections to Muslim Brotherhood. And, and, and you know, this is a good example where this professor in Yale University is basically is saying that it was India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to, in, to Bangladesh that outraged the Bangladeshi Muslims into attacking Hindu temples and Hindus in Bangladesh. So basically, you know, the fact, the crime that these Hindus in Bangladesh have committed is that they are the natives of the land. They have lived there for thousands of years. And a prime minister from another country who also happens to be Hindus goes and visits this country and that invites the attacks from Muslims and he legitim this, this Yale professor is legitimizing it. Imagine if this was done against the Jewish community, against the Christian community, or even against the Muslim community by anybody else, this professor, professor would have lost his job in Yale and would have never found employment anywhere. But again, thanks to the, uh, thanks to the you know, laid back attitude of our communities in America, 
this professor will go scot free at best he will be discussed no no he'll like get that. he'll get even more grants and he'll get funding from all the uh, organizations uh, countries that we listed above uh, qatar will give him money and other countries will give him money and he'll have an endowed chair that he'll, he'll be sitting right for al jazeera next professor. he's he's going to get to write for al jazeera against us now yeah and, and not only that i mean he'll be he will be uh, a full professor and spewing more hate how does a person like this even get a job at yale and the answer to that is he gets a job at yale because yale like other uh, like other universities in america get money from some of these countries and that to to me utsada is a sad commentary on how academics in america is compromised absolutely and i think the ajay bhai as always we usually go over time this time we went half an hour over time but uh, this was a uh, so that i cannot thank you enough this was a really great great um, uh, uh, show we uh, we did uh, quite a bit of expose on the uh, on this ecosystem of hindu hate in america thank you very much i want to thank everyone um, who joined us uh, you know, and uh, i you know we, we would not be doing this show if nobody was watching but so thank you um, we will uh, you know please please call participate uh please uh, tell your friends to watch because at the end of the day uh our goal is really to educate hindus in america thank you very very much so that um thank you and i'll see you next week subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button